the subject right now I want to spend a little bit of time on. And that has to do with terrorism. Our concern is not just about these illicit weapons, it's the way that these illicit weapons can be connected to terrorists and terrorist organizations that have no compunction about using such devices against innocent people around the world. Iraq and terrorism go back decades, back to... Good afternoon. Spanish author George Santanaya said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Is there any more subject, is there any subject more serious than war? Is there any subject worth more consideration than if a nation is to enter into conflict? These are the questions I considered when picking Colin Powell's speech to the UN on February 5th, 2003. For a bit of context, America was still reeling from the attacks of 9-11. Pretty much at that point, the administration could put forth almost any argument that would promote striking out against someone who's perceived as an enemy, as a sponsor of terrorism, as a willing associate of terrorism. And thus, they tried to build a case against Iraq for the time basically from September 12, 2001 until the time that we actually started war with them in April of 2003. This audience for the speech is bifold. Obviously speaking from the UN, you're speaking to the UN, representatives of all nations around the world. The general was very aware that he was going to receive a cold reception there. Many other countries were not with us on this. As far as they were concerned, Iraq did not contain the ability to be a threat to the United States. And you now all have the benefit of history, so you know how that did work out. The other audience he was trying to reach, and more importantly, was he was using the floor of the UN to speak to the American people. One of the biggest things that he brings to the table, more than the words he can say, was at that time he had such credibility. Anything he said was taken seriously. He was actually, by Gallup Poll's most admired persons of the year, he was the second most admired male in the US. So when he spoke, people listened. He matters. And when you have to sell something that is so unpopular to the world, you're not gonna just send out anybody. You're gonna send a man who's credible, who's clinical, and doesn't have to resort to hysteria or fearful tactics to make his point. The impact of the speech was dramatic. In the two weeks beforehand, only 49% of Americans supported attacking Iraq. The day after the speech, the number was 63%. Moving a poll 14 points is impressive. And being able to do it in the context of a 100 minute long speech is also impressive because we historically don't have that sort of attention span. Newspapers around the country took his presentation as a damning indictment of Iraq. Even papers considered to the left such as New York Times. William Sapphire can paraphrase to saying, perhaps Colin Powell didn't show us the smoking gun, but he at least proved Iraq was concealing it. Every other paper in the country basically followed suit, including the Chicago Sun-Times, the Denver Post, and USA Today, also not bastions of conservative thinking. The techniques of the speech are less interesting than most, as opposed to for a dramatic presentation. He went with what appeared to be an intellectual case. I will show you evidence. I will show you more evidence. I will show you so much evidence that my story is undeniable. And that's what he did. His visual presentations included a slideshow of over 40 slides, including satellite imagery, photographs, film, and recordings taken from various Iraqi sources. It was a complete case. Granted, it may not have been an entirely truthful case. But if you have to sell a cherry-picked case of intelligence, again, you go with the man whose word will not be challenged. Democrats at the time loved him. They were afraid he would run for president in 2008 and he'd be unstoppable. Luckily, he did this speech and that was no longer an issue. As I said, the UN wasn't into this to start with. He didn't move them. They came down where they came down. There were no resolutions from the UN, as anyone will recall, that gave us permission to go to war with Iraq. We and the coalition of the willing went into Iraq for, uh, well, we're still kind of there. 
the main part about this with the presentation, I think the most important part is that it's delivered intellectually, and yet is still an appeal of fear. And that's kind of clever, because I'm going to bank on the fact that you're still afraid of something like 9-11 happening again. But I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to instead reinforce your fears with the evidence, whether it's true or not. As it was a 100-minute speech, the movement was kind of limited to what I showed you. Read up, read up, little hand gestures. Obviously, he was reading from manuscript. If you're going to quote report after report, statistic after statistic, you just don't have the ability to drift from it. Plus, to risk misquoting a statistic in this sort of thing could be devastating to your case. And that being said, war is a very serious issue, and it deserves a great deal of consideration. What I would like to point from this is, we will get into this situation again. And when we do, I hope that we're more critical of how we approach it. This is a man who is known for being great, and we absorbed his words with less criticism than we should. And hopefully we won't do that in the future because those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Thank you.